What if Super Auto Pets collaborated with other games like Pokemon to make booster packs? In the case of Pokemon, I would add quite a few Pokemon and a new archetype and this is what they'd do. Not every booster pack needs a tier 1, but no Pokemon would fit tier 1 like Magikarp would. In the games, Magikarp famously has no ability doing nothing, until of course it evolves into the very powerful Gyarados. In Sap, it follows this pattern. A Magikarp only has 2-2 two -two stats and no ability, but if you manage to get it to level 3, it can transform into a level 1 Gyarados on her. This can be done in battle or in shop depending on how you'd like it to work. Obviously, this also synergizes well with pets that give XP for an earlier chance at Gyarados. Gyarados in the games is a powerful foe, and one of its most notable moves is Outrage, which to simplify makes Gyarados attack repeatedly at the cost of a self-damaging status. In Sap, Gyarados would work similarly, after attack taking a percentage of its own attack as damage and attacking a second time. This means pets that heal are a good synergy along with pets who work when the friend attack attacks. Gyarados is a high risk, high reward pet and a fitting reward from a level 3 Magikarp. In the Pokemon games, Jigglypuff has one famous move over everything else and that's Sing. Sing is a move that puts any nearby Pokemon that hear it to sleep and obviously its Sap ability will reference this. Jigglypuff is a tier 2 end of turn pet, which gives plus 1 plus 1, plus 2 plus 2, or plus 3 plus 3 to adjacent friends depending on level, along with Unicorn Pack's new Dazed ailment. This early in the game, this amount of stats is very nice, but also very risky. Dazed means that a pet's ability can't go off, so whatever pet gets this buff needs to have the ailment removed or overridden. Good synergy for Jigglypuff would be things like Frigate Bird or Unicorn Lake. You can also use perk distributors like Toucan to overwrite these ailments, or even overwrite it with a different, less punishing ailment. Bulbasaur is one of the three starter Pokemon which I decided I would include on top of the original six planned pets for this pack. It is a grass type Pokemon, a type of Pokemon that usually has a lot of healing moves. In Sap, it is a tier 3 pet that has one of these healing abilities, and while it isn't as snug a fit for Bulbasaur, the ability itself is a nice fit for this pack and Sap. When a friend is hurt in battle, Bulbasaur will give it plus 1, plus 2, or plus 3 health for each battle it has fought in. This means the healing effect gets stronger the longer you have the Pokemon, working with a lot of Bulbasaur's self-buffing moves in the games. This works well with Gyarados and other hurt or self-hurting pets, and can be very good late game. Obviously, with a Pokemon pack, you have to have Pikachu, and Pikachu in the games and show is Ash's brave best friend and can give paralysis on attacks. This was the hardest ability I had to come up with as it's just so important, but here's what I settled on. In Sap, if the front friend's health is less than the front enemy's attack, Pikachu will jump to the front, gain attack, and give the enemy the exposed ailment. This ability fits Pikachu's personality of jumping in to save its friends, and is a great tempo pet that synergizes with ailment teams and jumping teams. Wartortle is the second stage evolution of Squirtle and our second of the starters. In the show, it is a fairly goofy, unserious Pokemon that loves to play. To fit this, I made Wartortle a tier 4 toy pet in Sap, giving the option to, of choosing one beach toy. Bubble Wand is the first toy inspired by the Pokemon's bubble based attacks. When a friend faints, it deals 4 damage to the front enemy, working 2, 4, or 6 times. This synergizes well with summons and with ailments that work well with multiple instances of damage. The cool sunglasses are the other toy, a break toy inspired by Squirtle's iconic sunglasses in the show. On break, sunglasses stock 2, 4, or 6 duplicate pets, which are pets that are already on your team. These pets aren't free, so it can synergize well with buy-sell teams, but also works very well simply as a crow-like take to gain experience. If it breaks in battle, it'll summon one, two, or three duplicate pets to give things like Chameleon and Mandrill more to play with. Snorlax in the games is quite famously effective as an immovable object. In fact, it is actually an obstacle in the overworld. Also in the games, it's known for stalling, taking a long time to knock out as it regains health from its already large health pool. In Super Auto Pets, I wanted to keep Snorlax as this immovable wall, so its ability is to regain 20, 40, or 60% of the damage it has taken on any hurt, but only dealing 50% of its own attack. This pet is a great fit for teams that benefit from the friend ahead attacking multiple times, but can also be used with things that work with gained health, like the new Hippocampus. Eevee, while not a starter in the original Gen 1 games, is a starter in others and felt too important not to include. Eevee is known for its evolutions, its different elemental forms it can turn into. 
I tried when doing this not to make every pet have an evolution ability and to only give such abilities to Pokemon whose identity cl is closely tied to evolution, and no pet is closer tied to it than Eevee. In Sap, it has the same type of ability, with multiple conditions to fill which will transform it into the desired pet. To turn it into Vaporeon, you will need to sell three pets in a turn. For Flareon, it needs to knock out three enemies in battle. For Jolteon, it needs to experience three friendly level ups in one turn. And for Leafeon, it needs to eat three different shop foods all in one turn. Vaporeon is the water type evolution, and I figured by cell synergy would fit with water well, as pets flow in and out of the team. Vaporeon has maybe my personal favorite ability of all these Pokemon, as at the start of battle, it sells the friend ahead of it at level 1, 2, or 3. The gold from the pet sold will show up at the start of turn, like other gold gainers. At worst, this pet is a gold gainer with drawback, but at best, it allows cell pet synergy to flourish in battle. Things like Stoke can now be in battle summons, or Hercules Beetle can be used to buff at the start of battle. Flareon is the fire evolution, and personally, I always associate fire with destruction. Flareon, coming from knocking out enemies, has a knockout ability similar to Unicorn Pack's Chupacabra. Flareon distributes stats on knockouts, although Flareon gives plus 2, plus 4, or plus 6 permanent attack to a random friend when it knocks something out. Permanent in battle scaling is always fun and always works with things like Tiger or other ways to knock things out like Tomato, Fig, or Mana. Jolteon is an electric type evolution, and with electric types I always think of Thunderbolt. To pay homage to this Thunderstrike, Jolteon is a start of battle sniper with a unique way to power it up. At the start of battle, it takes all experience from adjacent pets and deals 3, 6, or 9 damage to the healthiest enemy on the other team, in a single powered up strike. This synergizes well with things like Blobfish that can replenish experience in battle, and with end of turn abilities which don't need experience in battle at all. Leafeon is the grass type evolution, and while apparently it was not originally in Gen 1 of Pokemon, this felt incomplete without it. Since Leafeon comes from eating shop foods, its ability will follow this trend. On eating a shop food, Leafeon will stock a shop food from the next shop tier for 3, 2, or 1 gold. This means early access to whatever foods you're hoping for, as well as synergy to get even more foods for food builds with things like Sauropod or Elephant Seal. Now is probably a good time to mention that shiny Pokemon exist in this, just like in the games. Shinies have a 1 in 4,800 chance of appearing whenever a Pokemon appears in shop or is summoned. These likely wouldn't have their own achievements, or even show up in achievements as to discourage grinding, but what do you think? In the games, Abra is a skittish Pokemon who moves around itself and others with a teleport ability. Abra was the last addition to this pack, as I really wanted to flesh out this archetype, and this was the perfect Pokemon for it. Abra, before attack, will remove the friend behind it from your team and summon it on the enemy team. Obviously on its own, this isn't a great ability, but with proper preparation can lead to great synergy with pets that knock out others or can benefit from multiple attacks. For example, with a Flareon, you can summon a slug on the enemy team and get multiple knockouts. This ability is very open-ended and can lead to some incredibly unique teams. Charizard is arguably second place for the most recognizable Pokemon for good reason. This orange dragon is the final of the three starters coming from Charmander. In the games, it's a sweeper Pokemon intended to blast through opponents fast and strong. In Sap, I figure a sweeper should have a knockout ability, and considering its most popular move is likely Flamethrower, I figured this would be a good time to use Crisp. Charizard on knockout gives 1, 2, or 3 pets ahead the Crisp ailment. This means to start, Charizard is a bit worse than the new boy Tata, but quickly becomes a powerhouse if given stats. This synergizes well with things like Manticore and Vampire Bat, as well as being a great target for general scaling. Gengar in the games is a tricky ghost type Pokemon with a lot of ways to mess with opponents. In Super Auto Pets, it's my final piece of enemy summon synergy as has been very visible throughout with pets like Flareon, Abra, and Charizard. Gengar on an enemy summon will give that summon its own held food perk or ailment. This works 2, 4, or 6 times per battle. You could give ailments like Weakness or Exposed or specifically chosen perks like Chili to set off something like Sabretooth. Gengar can be used in a variety of builds to turn your enemy's choices to your advantage. I feel Pokemon wouldn't be complete without a Pokeball, another tier 5 perk. Pokeballs being used to capture Pokemon, I figured summoning a knocked out pet was the only reasonable usage. This is nice summon synergy with the drawback of no summons if that pet didn't knock anything out. 
A side effect of this perk is allowing all pets that have previously been unobtainable in the shop to be obtainable for achievements, and can be combined with Abra to search for said achievements more efficiently. Mew is our tier 6 Pokemon, which means it's time for a legendary. Mew is a small, unassuming, but magical and important Pokemon, giving good fortune and glad tidings to those lucky enough to see it. Since seeing Mew is such a personal experience, I thought it'd be fitting to have it help all pets in a way. In Sap, Mew gives plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 or plus 3 plus 6 depending on level to all friends with the same trigger type as the friend ahead. This scaling can help almost any build, but you'll have to be careful what types of pets you grab. However, Mew does have one extra secret if given the Kunpeito food, which is a new food added in the Unicorn pack which transforms a Pokemon into a pet of the next shop tier. This is the only method in which you can receive Mewtwo, the only tier 7 unit. Mewtwo in the game shows and movies is considered one of, if not the most powerful Pokemon ever. It's a clone of Mew designed to be the next step in evolution. It's also a psychic type Pokemon and uses mind control to influence other Pokemon. Now, in Sap, it would be silly to have a strongest pet unequivocally, so I just opted for a fitting ability around tier 6 quality. Mewtwo, before attacking, deals the enemy's attack to itself, working 1, 2, or 3 times in a turn. This is fitting with the psychic attacks that Mewtwo tends to use and his great tempo. This works well against pets with balanced scaling, where attack and health are likely to be similar and can feel like a scorpion that can knock out one, two, or three pets, in a way, although less certain. And there you have it, Pokemon and Super Auto Pets. Stay tuned for the next booster pack for more synergy sprites and mechanics. Also join the Discord as for following packs, I'll be taking viewer submissions. If you want to see more of this and don't want to wait, make sure to watch my last booster pack video. Finally, these videos take a super long time to make and the majority of my viewers are not subscribed, so consider doing that, and have a great day.